know, so. Um, well, I a lot of them are at their last moments yeah. too. I mean, it seems like from looking at your Instagram, yeah. these are dogs that have been near death, near death, yeah. abused, Correct. neglected. I have whatever. dogs that have their legs cut off. I have dogs that have been hit with machetes, hit by cars, you know, starved near death. Like, how we are get you them. finding these dogs? Uh, you know, I work closely with the NYPD. I work closely with the FDNY. Everybody. How did you get that credibility, though? How did they? I'm a man on a mission. When I said it, I meant it. And, you know, I just built up a reputation because I'm somebody who shows up. So, so they call you they now call me. before they go to the shelter. They don't want to bring the dogs to the shelter. They call me first. I mean, it, it, it's not a good feeling to say no. But nowadays, you know, I have over 50 dogs in my care. Oh, you do? I'm, yeah. Wow. Everybody, everybody's the first one to call me, but the last one to share my dogs. You know, right. 200,000 plus followers on Instagram. Um, you know, I don't even, I'm not a Facebook guy, so... But I'm all over Facebook. Everybody tags Pitbulls and Addicts. Yeah. But then when I look at my shares, it's like, so I just had 30,000 people view this and, you know, 25 shares. Got it. Okay. So let's talk the, about the logistics. It's called Freedom House? So Fre their home is called Freedom Home. Freedom Home. Okay. Freedom Home. And that is the location you're talking about that Correct. this guy gave you? Yes. What does it look like? How did you build it? So when I first started, I took the back room of a bar, mm -hmm. and I just had the, you know, the mindset of, like, let me just build something comfortable. Um, you know, so I, I built uh, their old liquor room. I, I transformed into three, uh, four bedrooms. Okay. So I put dividing walls with tile, and then I put cages in the front. And you're a handy guy. I'm so a handy guy. So you did this yeah. on your own. Yeah. In the beginning, it was my everything was me. It was like I would work my jobs, and then at nighttime I would go there. Um, and the you dogs know. you had that you were rescuing or looking for homes for or whatever, you immediately put in there. Yeah. Well, Aria came with me, mm -hmm. and then the, the right after Aria, I got a girl, uh, this Jersey girl. So I had two dogs in there. Um, and, and meanwhile, then, how many were at home? Did you still have honey? Yeah, I had. Uh, well, honey was with me just into two years ago. So and honey gave me almost seven years. Yeah. So I just want to go back to that for one second. They gave her six months. You six had months. Her she gave me almost seven, seven years. Seven years. Yeah. She became a, just a major impact in, in my mission. Like, you know, she's the one who made me feel the way that I feel today. All of these other dogs are great. You know, like I have such a such a loving desire of, of like just being that man for all of the dogs. Mm -hmm. But honey's the reason that I felt that I was this person. So did she die? Of her, the thing yeah, that was her heart exploded. Exactly what they told me was going to happen was happened. She just she grew so so like so rapidly that she was able to open up some passageways, but I knew she wasn't going to have a normal life. Yeah. Um, I also didn't think it was going to happen on the day that it happened. She came in from a play group. I gave her a bone. She went and laid down and literally went to sleep. So. Oh, so um, at least it was peaceful. Well, yeah, I mean. That's all I really wanted, you know, like as as a changed man, I know that, you know, we, we're not going to be here forever. And mm -hmm. I just want all of my dogs to, to, you know, be at peace into their last breath and their last breath. I want to be peaceful. Yeah. So, you know, I rescue all of these abuse and neglect and some of them just don't make it. There's they can't beat the fight. Uh, I don't ever question any type of medical, anything that's needed for them. It's 100 percent. Let's go. Yeah. You know, like I spend a lot of money on medical. No questions asked. I have medical partners. I. You know, I, I built such a, a really good reputation and a relationship with my... Do some of these vets want to do pro I bono? Or? I only work with one vet, based in oh. Animal Hospital. Okay. Yeah. Um, when, I when I first went on my own, you know, after me and my ex had split up, and I, I had a, um, one of these little pugs that I rescued, um, a doctor said to me, like, this dog is not going to make it. Like, why don't you just use this money for another dog? And that was the biggest turnoff. Oh. And I said, because I don't want to. I promise this dog will fight, <laughs> right. and we're going to fight. Right. That dog got seven months, you know, like, but, you know, that's when I realized, like, hey, listen, you know, this is, I'm not jumping from vet to vet. Yeah. So I built a, you know, a really good, you know, self-built relationship with Bay Street Animal Hospital, and they do 98% of my work. If and, I have an emergency. And do they give you a discount on Yeah, they stuff? give me a discount. I mean, okay. listen, it, 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 they're not cheap. You know, right. it's, I'm 100% discounted. But I pay for everything. Yeah. You know, it's this is real care. I, I won't use but a But they're clinic. also in an emergency situation. They yeah. are listening to you, taking the dog in. Correct. They, they've never asked me for a down payment. They've never said no. As They, they, they ask me, like, do you want to do this? Yes. Do you want to do this? Yes. The answer is yes, to the point that they don't even ask me anymore. They know it's, it's called the Big Mike service. Right. <laughs> you know, like, 
And, you know, in the beginning of rescue, they, they tried to explain to me what other rescue groups do. Mm. Not every rescue group gets them fully vaccinated from any any type of vaccine that can go in. I want them to have it. Right. Like um, spay or neuter. You know, there's clinics out here that do pit bulls for free. You know, I've heard horrible stories of, you know, dogs being sewn back up with instruments in them, you know, just yeah, chop jobs. And I'm like, that's just not for me. So they do discount my service, but I also do pay for a service. But it's a service that I could count on and that if I was a rescued dog that I would want to be, you know, worked on by those doctors and the staff at Bay Street. So I have seen a tour on your Instagram yes. of Freedom Home. Freedom Home? Did I get that right? Freedom House? Home, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um it's amazing. Yeah. So is that just little by little you kept adding to it? I mean, yeah, I had no choice because, yeah. you know, I when I first started rescuing, I thought that it would be you rescue them and then somebody wants to adopt. Mm -hmm. But then I found myself that people weren't adopting. So that. how often are you getting a dog and how often is it get, are they getting uh, in and out? What's the um, rate? The in ratio, like I've turned down 16 dogs in five days right now. Right now, my intake is closed. If there's a dog that's starving and skin and bones and that's what I rescue, I will do what I have to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the adoption the adoption rates aren't high. You know, everybody... Yeah. Especially everybody, for pit bulls. Correct. But yeah. it's not only pit bulls. I have, I have a dog summer with me for five years. She's a Dutch Shepherd mix. Like, she's getting gray. And it's sad to me because I don't rescue them to grow old with me. I rescue them to give them an opportunity to live a second life that, yeah. that they always imagined. I always think about how I felt as a broken boy, and I know that that's how they felt when they were you know, living in those kind of situations. And I know where I am today, and I just hope that one day that they would land that. You know, yeah. But you know, I kind of came to terms of understanding that that's not really how it is. A lot of people for social media... Everything is, everybody wants that dog when you first rescue them. Yeah. And one of my rules is that I will not adopt the dog out unless the dog is rehabilitated and medically approved to go home by my doctors. Right. Um, when that time comes, the people have now forgotten about that dog. Sure, of course. So, you know, I just kept on expanding. Um, when I first started this mission, like I said, it's in the back of a bar. I was an alcoholic, fresh in recovery. I used to walk through the bar to build this mission. Uh, during the pandemic, the bar closed down. So I took over the bar. Oh. So then I built out the bar. I took over a storefront. I'm building that. And I built the yard. I built the yard three times. In the, in the, the first time I built it, um, I remember sitting in, in the yard on June 6, 2017 and explaining this vision of creating a, a safe haven that if I was a rescue dog, how would I want to live? Mm -hmm. And my father was beyond proud of me. He sat. It was an empty lot overrun with garbage and uh, just all weeds and there was trees everywhere, and I just had this vision, and, and, I, and I told my father, I'm ready and willing to do this, and I meant it. I built it, um, and it was all self-funded, so what I did was I took $5,000, my last $5,000, and I called my lumber yard, and I asked them to give me all of their scraps and, and all of their garbage that they mm -hmm. couldn't sell, um, and they did it. They gave me $5,000 worth of garbage. They dropped it off in the back of the lot, and I started to build. Um, and then throughout the years, I realized that my build wasn't going to meet the needs of all of the dogs because if I have dogs out in cages and there's dogs in the yard, they're all going to be barking and then the neighbors are going to start complaining. Um, I got, in 2018, somebody threw a cocktail and tried to burn me down. Um, that was an eye-opener for me. What do you mean? Um, I guess, I mean, I didn't come out of addiction with anybody looking for me, so it wasn't done from my yeah. past. It may have been somebody in the neighborhood that, that didn't, like, didn't like pit bulls or didn't like what I was about and mm -hmm. want, didn't want me there. But, you know, the, the Austin investigator showed me exactly where it hit, where, where it sparked from. And, you know, um, I remember... Was it in the middle of the night? It was, was it? in the middle of the night. I left that place on camera at 11.47. And, and it went it? up at like 3-something. Were any of the animals hurt? No. My dogs, all everybody stays inside. You know, even to today... They have, like, you know, I've built some outhouses. I built a, a building in the yard, you mm -hmm. know, but um, nobody ever stays out loose. Um, yeah, but had somebody not gotten there in time, the whole place would have been burned. The fire department's right around the block. Oh, perfect. You know, when the, <laughs> nec the next morning when I pulled up, because, you know, I was like, what is going on? Um, they actually drew guns on me. They thought that I was the arson. Oh, wow. You know, that I was the one who lit it up because it was my place um, for whatever reasons. And then... I said, listen, put your guns down. Let me go check my dogs. I don't have many inside, but 
uh, let me check them and then we could discuss this. So I went inside and my dogs were okay, everything was okay, but I looked at my place and I was like, this is, my dreams have just been burned down. And I remember standing there and saying to myself, like, this, do I let this go and go on with my, on, on with my life right. or do I rebuild? So they burnt one of my kennels down and a tool shed. You know, they uh -huh. burned all my tools, $35,000 worth of tools Oof. and my first kennel. And I said to myself, I'm going to build better and, and, and I'm going to come back. So, so you learned from they built they, they burnt down one, so I built two, <laughs> right? And I built it different, right? So I learned from that. And then as I got, you know, more passionate about what I was doing, because now this truly has, like, it's not that I was just searching for a purpose anymore. It was like this was my reality. Like, yeah. you know, this is what I'm up against. And I just continued to build and to meet the needs and to understand what, rescue dogs needs yeah like so now you see my place you think it's beautiful but you know it's because i'm i i, I put them first mm. you know like my dogs eat before i eat you know i also realize that most of rescue is all volunteer based mm -hmm. i compensate right. so anybody that's working for me is taken care of then the reason being is because if i want them to take care of my dogs they can't work full-time jobs. This is their full-time job. So how are they going to be able to survive? And are you looking for people to work there that understand the dogs and your you? I mean, are they former Well, first addicts? of all, they, they it's not only addicts. It's because, like, you know, I'm not only an addict. I was also a broken boy. I'm a broken human. And I do understand that change is possible. So I will work with anybody. But I also have zero tolerance. Okay. You know, like, I'm about rescue and rehabilitation. I'm about being a good human. Mm -hmm. You know, so people that come to me, you know, they, they come and they go, you know, um, I'm always looking for good people. And, you know, I always offer, you know, a fair pay. I, I, I wish I could pay them more because they deserve yeah. as, as much as I could give them. But I make it fair enough. Hey, listen, if you work a lot of hours, you're going to have a nice paycheck. You know, right. um, as far as the addicts go, when I first started doing this, I tried to like pull addicts towards me. Mm -hmm. And my way of recovery is like, you know, I just I, I, I had no choice. I, I had no insurance to go to rehab. I found a purpose, and this is where I got where right. I am today. Um, I don't want no victims. I don't want, you know, anybody that's in it for the wrong reasons. A lot of people think that, you know, you just get involved with animal rescue and it's just um, walking dogs or playing with them or posing for pictures. It's the complete opposite. Like, you know, we scrub our, our rooms by hand. Our dogs live a life that, like, if I had a child, that I would provide for my child. And I was raised by amazing parents, so mm -hmm. it's just... You know, instead of me having children, because I don't have no children, it's, this is the care that we take care of our, our animals. So they live in complete cleanliness. Like, we do our laundry every single day. Mm -hmm. Our dogs are very well taken care of.